Hello, my name is Pavan. I'm from Fiber Galaxy team. In this video, I will show you how to pre-process single cell RNA sequencing data from 10x genomics platform. The training material for this tutorial can be accessed uh, from the GTN website or directly within the Galaxy itself. I prefer to access them within the Galaxy so that I, I can always choose the correct versions of the tools from the tutorials. So first go to single cell topic and then scroll down to find uh, the tutorial named Preprocessing of 10x Single Cell RNA Datasets. Enter the tutorial. And in this tutorial, you are going to learn how to map 10x data uh, as well as quantify genes. And then you will also learn how to uh, filter out uh, noisy data to get a high quality count matrix. The data uh, that we are going to use in this tutorial is, of course, uh, from 10x Genomics. It contains 1,000 PBMC cells extracted from a healthy donor. The data from 10x usually comes in bundles of uh, such three uh, FASTQ files, where the first uh, two are to be made pairs, read one and read two. And there's an additional uh, index file uh, that is used for multiplexing the data. We are not going to use the, this third FASTQ file uh, in this tutorial, so we need only the forward and reverse reads for this uh, analysis. So let's first get the data into Galaxy, copy the links uh, to the Zenodo here, and then we will uh, paste them in Galaxy. So before that, first create a history and then rename it. And now up, click on Upload Data paste and fetch data, and then paste the links here. So click on the start. We will also need two more f uh, files uh, for this analysis. The first one is uh, a GTF file that contains the gene annotations, or also information about the splice junctions. And the second one is a cell uh, barcode whitelist file. And this, con this uh, contains all possible uh, barcodes that were used during the library preparation. So let's copy these two files uh, links and also paste them here and start uploading the data. The data is now uploaded. Let's uh, first look at the data before jumping into the analysis. So here we have four FASTQ files from the same sample, uh, but sequenced in two different lanes. If you look at the forward reads of one of the lanes, uh, they are, have really short sequences uh, because the forward read contains only information about uh, cell barcode and uh, UMIs. So the first 16 bases here represents the cell barcodes and the remaining 12 bases are from the UMIs. In the reverse reads, we have much longer sequences. In this case, it's uh, 90 bases long, and this represents the cDNA or the mRNA. And the length of these uh, <coughs> read 1 and read 2 also depends on the, the the chromium chemistry version that was used during the library preparation. So our sample uh, that we are going to analyze today is uh, from chromium chemistry v3 version. Hence, we have a first read of 28 bases and the second read of 91 bases. If the samples are from chromium chemistry V2, then we have a little bit longer uh, cDNA, but the uh, read one is shorter because we have a shorter UMI here. And here we also have two more files. Uh, the first one is a gene annotation file in GTF format. It contains all the information about the positions of the genes on the reference genome, and also information on uh, what genotype they are, or what uh, gene IDs, names, etc. And then we also have information about uh, cell barcodes in this last file here. And this is a white list of all barcodes that are used in the chromium chemistry V3 version during the library preparation. Here we have about 6.9 6.8 million lines, uh, and each of these lines contains a barcode of 16 bases long. And in the end, uh, in our FASTQ files, only 
will contain about thousand uh, of these uh, barcodes because we have a sample that contains only thousand uh, cells. Now let's begin with the analysis part. So the first step that we are going to perform is mapping the multiplexing and quantification. For this, we will use a tool called RNA star solo. For running this tool, we need to choose a reference genome. In this case, we will use a human HG19 genome assembly and uh, its corresponding GTF file. We will also need uh, the reads and uh, the barcodes whitelist file. We have all the files in our history. Uh, let's uh, run this tool. So first we have to select the reference genome here. And it's corresponding uh, GTF file is already uh, selected there. And then here we need to choose input types as a separate barcode and cDNA reads. As we already know that the uh, barcodes are in the forward read, let's select only the R1 here. And we know that the cDNA are in R2. So let's only select the first few files uh, with R2. Yes, select the barcode whitelist file. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, the library was prepared during, uh, using a Chromium Chemistry V3 version. So select its uh, corresponding option. And now we will use a uh, Chromium, uh, sorry, CellRanger 2 to 4 algorithm because we are trying to mimic CellRanger uh, analysis here. Uh, we also use CellRanger options for UMI filtering as well as uh, matching cell barcodes to the whitelist. And uh, for counting the UMIs, uh, we will use gene features. So in this case, we will count only uh, the reads that map to the exons of the genes. If you have single uh, nuclear data, uh, you would have to select one of these uh, options that start with full. Uh, in that case, you will count uh, all the reads that uh, map to uh, exons uh, as well as introns. Now we are not going to filter any uh, cells. So we set it to do not filter. In the later steps of the analysis, uh, we will use uh, different uh, tools and methods for filtering. For now, run the tool. Finally, after waiting for a while, we have the mapping results ready. Star Solar produced six different output files. We have a log file with uh, mapping stats. There is a genes raw file that copies all the gene IDs, gene symbols from the input GTF file. There's also a barcodes uh, raw file, which contains all the barcodes from the whitelist. There's a count matrix. There's also a BAM file with all the alignments. And finally, we have uh, uh, statistic summaries uh, of barcodes and genes. Uh, to <coughs> visualize the mapping quality, we can use multi-QC tool. But here I'm not going to use this tool because we have only one sample. Uh, it's probably easier to directly look at the log file to check the mapping quality. Here we see that uh, there are about 87.5% of the reads are uniquely mapped, which is a good indication that our mapping was successful. And now we will also look at uh, this final file with uh, statistic summaries on barcodes and genes. It contains two sections, uh, namely barcodes and genes. Uh, in the first section, uh, we have to check for this uh, row here that indicates the number of reads that have an exact match to the barcodes whitelist. And this section, this number should be the dominant one and then we can move to the next section here. In the genes section, we have to check this number here, which indicates the number of reads uh, that have a match to the white list of barcodes, as well as mapped uniquely to one of the genes. Uh, and in this section, this number should be the dominant one. There's also another number that is uh, interesting for us, which is uh, 
this row here that indicates a number of uh, barcode cell barcodes that are detected by star solo so you might wonder why do we have 5200 barcodes detected if we start with thousand cells so these are the these are the all these are all the barcodes that can be detected by star solo it contains uh, noisy cells, also cells, uh, barcodes with ambient RNA and so on. So we have to filter out all these uh, noisy or lowly expressed or uh, cells with ambient RNA, uh, sorry, barcodes with ambient RNA, and then to generate a high quality count matrix, which can be used for clustering and further downstream analysis. Now let's proceed to the filtering of the cells. For filtering out uh, the noisy data, we will use a tool called Droplet Utils. Uh, here we tr will try out two different methods for filtering. The first one is Cell Ranger method uh, that filters out uh, <coughs> uh, low quality cells based on the expected number of cells. And the other method is called uh, Empty Drops method, which select the, selects the high quality cells based on the, the UMI counts per cell. Uh, let's uh, first try the empty drop. Sorry, uh, the cell ranger method with the droplet details tool, <coughs> and uh, choose the format as bundled. And we have to choose here the matrix count data, and here the genes list, and here the barcodes list. And here we filter for the barcodes. Use the default drops, which is the cell ranger method, and uh, let's leave the numbers to the default and we will again produce a bundled output and now run the tool <coughs> the results from the cell ranger method of filtering are now ready if we look at the output file uh, this method found uh, 272 high quality cells if we remember the star solo initially predicted there are about uh, 5200 non-empty barcodes so now we ended up with only a tiny fraction of these 5200 to be of uh, valid cells or high quality cells and now let's proceed to the next step or next different method of filtering which is uh, empty drops filtering for empty drops filtering we have to find uh, a cutoff on the minimum number of your mice per cell uh, in order to find this cutoff we first have to draw the distribution of uh, your mice the number of your mice per cell for this we will again use the droplet utils tool uh, again select bundled information now select the initial results from star solo not from the droplet utils so again matrix the genes as well as the barcodes and now the operation is not filtering but ranking so rank barcodes and now run the tool and this will now produce a plot now let's look at this plot such plot is called barcode ranks plot uh, each circle in this plot represents a barcode or a droplet the x-axis we have barcode ranks that are computed from the UMI counts and on the y-axis we have the total UMI counts per cell. We also have two horizontal lines uh, representing knee and inflection points. Knee and inflection uh, points indicate the transition between the high quality cells to low quality or even empty droplets. Uh, in this case we have a knee at 4861 uh, so all the cells with more than 4860 totally on my counts uh, can be considered as high quality cells in this uh, sample and all the cells which are towards uh, the bottom of this plot are most likely empty droplets we can use uh, 
the UMI, the total UMI counts uh, at this inflection line as uh, a cutoff for filtering low quality cells from our data set. So in this case, it's 260. We can also uh, predict or guess the number of cells after filtering out uh, based on this plot. For example, if we choose uh, 260 as a threshold for the minimum UMI counts, then we will have to drop a line from this intersection onto the x-axis, which lands here close to 100. That means we will end up with uh, uh, 200 or between 200 and 500 cells uh, if we filter with this threshold. And now let's proceed to the actual filtering. We will again use droplet utils tool. Again, select the bundle input matrix. Now uh, be careful here again, select the output of the star solo, not droplet utils. So again, select matrix from star solo, genes, and as well as barcodes from star solo. And now we filter for barcodes, but we the method we will use now is empty drops method. Here we can put a lower bound threshold of, for example, 260 here from the inflection line, but I will go for a little bit lenient uh, cutoff of 200 in this case. And we will also output bundled data. Now run the tool. Now let's find out how many quality cells we have after empty drops filtering. Click on any of the output data sets to expand and scroll down. Here we see there are 282 cells, which is 10 cells more than the cell ranger method. If you know already how many cells that you expect from your sample, or if you prepared the library by yourself, then you can use cell ranger method to select the high quality cells. But if you're unsure of the expected number of cells, or if you're analyzing a published data set, then you can use uh, empty drops filtering method and find out a decent uh, threshold on the total UMI counts for filtering out uh, low quality cells. And that's it for this uh, tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have fun with your data analysis. Thank you.